Welcome to Taking Care of Business on News Talk 1180-KERN for the best in Saturday talk radio at 1 o'clock and on 1230-KGEO at 10 o'clock Saturday. And for the best in Wednesday talk radio on 1410-KERI, the Christian station. We're now on 1000 KKIM in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and also three times a week on the Internet nationwide through knookmedia.com. Plus, you can catch any of our shows for the last four years. I can't believe that. On YouTube and Clay at the Clay and Marty Show. My partner's Clay Kerner, and I'm Marty Pay, and our producer's Greg Held. Hey, Clay, that was a great show last week with Dr. Jay Grimstead. Yeah, he's a pretty interesting individual, but he's really into the Bible, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah. What this country needs to get into. Definitely. Then we had Mary Lee Schreider on from The Right to Life, and that mm-hmm. was a fascinating, fascinating show. They've got some great legislation going out there, which which is going to make it interesting. It's it's always interesting. We have such interesting guests, you know that? Yeah, and we had fun last night. Which... Oh, we had a great time with uh, Governor Huckabee. Yes, yes, that was a great And uh, Shannon function. Grove. For Shannon Grove, yep, fundraiser for Shannon. And Rob from Ventura. Yes, we're running for the forty fourth district. McCoy, McCoy, I think, and we're going to have him on in the next couple of weeks. So, uh, we've got a fascinating show today. In the second half, we have our old buddy Wayne Root, who just came out with a, a new book. That'll be a lot of fun. And in the first half, we have a gentleman that uh, I definitely think we're going to be supporting, and uh, he is running for Secretary of State as the Republican candidate, Pete Peterson. Pete, welcome to Taking Care of Business. So good to be with you both. I got a first question right out of the chute. I understand you're the executive director over at the uh, Davenport Institute for Public Engagement and Civil Leadership at Pepperdine. Yes, that is my day job. I uh, do head up an institute there at Pepperdine in Malibu. And uh, while I do teach a class there to uh, master students in, in government and public policy, most of the work I do there is actually outside the classroom. I consult with and train government officials to do a better job of listening to their public. Now, so, so you're training government of- officials, basically? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, uh, we do this. Uh, we, we run several training programs out of the Institute and uh, have been all over the state from uh, San Diego all the way up to Eureka. We've actually done uh, a fair amount of work in the Central Valley, working in places like Modesto and Riverbank. Um, so, yeah, really doing a lot of work around the state, making sure that government is more uh, transparent and responsive to its citizens. What a refreshing idea, <laughs> especially <laughs> well, in California. Well, we really find that it's at a time when, because of the ongoing fiscal crisis uh, and because of the increase in technology, governments are really having to be much more uh, engaging of their residents, uh, or as we put it, either you either engage your residents or you will be engaged by them. <laughs> so uh, so we, we try to consult with, again, and, and train government uh, leaders in how to do a better job of being transparent and, and including their residents in making very tough local decisions. Seems to me they're slow learners. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a message that's still spreading. I would say we're really at the front edges of uh, what is a transformation in in the relationship between government and citizens. I know... Uh, six or seven years ago at Pepperdine, we were one of the first programs to do this work, and and now there are at least 15 to 20 programs like ours around the country. You know, you also work with a, a friend of ours who we've had on the show a couple times, and I've, I've worked for her when he actually ran for the Senate many, many years ago, and that's Bruce Hershenson. Oh, yes. Bruce is a good friend, and uh, of course, I got to know him through his work at uh, Pepperdine. We just had lunch a few weeks ago, and uh, no, Bruce is uh, Bruce is a good friend and has certainly been very helpful to me uh, as a consigliere. We can put it in those terms. Uh, as I've entered into this run, we we do share quite a bit as uh, people who have run for office, really for the first time, but running for statewide office. And uh, and so he's been very helpful to me. Well, if you think about it, tell him Marty Pay and Clay Kerner said hello. In fact, he's got uh, a class. I think it's on Thursday nights that. Uh, He's invited yes. me to come to, and I've, I've and I've been meaning to come. It's just one of those, you know, getting from Bakersfield to Malibu sometimes during the week is a bit of a problem. But um, but I, I'm definitely going to do it this this semester. So good. It's a great program he runs. Really is. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And you know, I'm glad he's still out there doing what he's doing. Yeah. So I want to ask you about your competitors. I guess you had a tough primary. Uh, there was some gr- pretty good individuals in there. I think uh, Lee. Leland Yee was in there. He's a Democrat. And then there was Senator Ron Calderon. He was also running. What happened to those guys? 
Well, uh, as it pertained to Leland Yee, uh, he was indicted by the FBI uh, for apparently, and obviously some of the details are still trickling out, uh, attempting to trade arms with uh, terrorists in the Philippines. Uh, it, it, the, the indictment at least reads like a movie script, but I think a lot of people saw Senator Yee at, when he had first announced last year as really one of the favorites in this race. Um, uh, Alex Padilla is uh, the other candidate, the Democrat state senator, who also made it through uh, the primary along with me. And uh, the initial field in the primary was eight candidates, so it was a pretty wide-ranging field. There was another Republican. There was also uh, a well-known Republican by the name of Dan Schnur, who was running as an independent. Uh, and at the end, in the primary, I made it through in the top two with Senator Padilla. Uh, we both were very close. Actually, Alex uh, edged me out at the end when uh, absentee ballots were counted only by about a half a percent. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty tight race. We actually had our first independent poll come out since the primary about two weeks ago, and it actually shows me leading by three points now that we're down to two candidates. Uh, suffice it to say, I think most people are saying this is going to be a very tight race all the way straight through to November. Wow. We're having a conversation with Pete Peterson, the Republican running for the Secretary of State in California. Now, you talked about the election, and um, I'm curious because I read an article by The Times that said you did not support voter ID laws. Yeah, I, well, I think it may be a clear way to put it is if you're, what can the Secretary of State do specifically to improve ballot integrity? And I really don't see that uh, voter ID is a path to that. It would be something that would have to be passed either in the legislature or through ballot initiative. Uh, suffice it to say, I've really tried to focus on the issues related to ballot integrity that the Secretary of State has jurisdiction over. And in particular, uh, a very big issue that unfortunately does not get enough attention, and that's why I'm, uh, I really am grateful for this opportunity here to speak with your listeners. California is the last state in America that does not have a statewide voter database. Uh, this is actually not state law. It's actually a federal mandate that came down over 10 years ago in the wake of the uh, Bush-Gore election of 2000 that every state in America must have a single statewide voter database as opposed to keeping their voter rolls on a county-by-county county basis. And California remains the last state that is outside of that uh, mandate. And how that relates to ballot integrity is we really don't have a clear sense as to how uh, clean, I guess you would call it, or certainly legitimate our voter rolls are. And uh, that is a responsibility directly of the Secretary of State's office uh, she did finally award a contract to a vendor to create the statewide voter database last year, uh, but unfortunately it was awarded to a company called CGI, which I think you and your listeners may know is the same company that built uh, healthcare.gov with such great uh, problems <laughs> with that. So I really see my number one responsibility uh, in becoming the next Secretary of State to oversee the implementation of the voter database and making sure that's done in a, uh, a transparent and legitimate way. So until you get elected and make some changes, we should probably file, follow the Chicago tradition to vote early and vote often? <laughs> well, as a candidate for Secretary of State, I would never be one to advocate such a strategy. <laughs> but I will say that uh, obviously being engaged in this particular race is going to be vitally important. Uh, again, the polling that's been out already shows this is going to be uh, a very tight race all the way straight through. I think most of the pundits who are looking at the statewide races are saying that both my race as well as the controller's race, where uh, in Fresno, obviously the mayor up there, Ashley Swearingen, is, is running a great campaign to be our next controller. Uh, I think that there are two great opportunities for common-sense Republicans to win statewide office. And I think in our two particular areas, obviously, Secretary of State oversees all the elections process in the state, and uh, the controller oversees the checkbook in many ways. I think these are uh, two offices in particular that we'd love to see uh, Republicans uh, overseeing and managing. You know, it's 
uh, again, going back, I, I understand that the voter base, uh, voter d- database, would take care of the problem as far as uh, as far as the ID. But mm. you know, we've had we've had people in here from different organizations prior to elections talk about, you know, you've got ten, fifteen people in the same residence, you know, the, like a John Smith, and all of a sudden it's J Smith or J yeah. L Smith. You know, you've got sixteen people voting in the same residence. So. Well, and that again relates to the quality of our voter rolls. You know, it was the uh, nonpartisan Pew Center on the states, a, a group out of D.C., that recently evaluated all the 50 election systems in the country and rated California 49th out of 50 states in how we conduct our elections. Yeah, and I'm one of the surprised. main reasons why they ranked us so low, we only beat Mississippi, by the way, if, if listeners are curious as to who we edged out there. Uh, the main, one of the main reasons why we perform so poorly is the quality of our voter roll, because they also estimated in the same study that we have at least one million out-of-date voter files here in California. Well, wow, people, so, we can, uh, and some, and some of that relates exactly to the problems that you're talking. Sure. About. When we come back from the break, let's let's pick up there a little bit, uh, also talking about some of the duties of the Secretary of State. Great. We'll be back in a moment on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180. 